All right, so it's day five of our five-day challenge, and we went through uh, several different things throughout the challenge. Yesterday, we talked a little bit about like the importance of follow-up. We talked about um, one of the products that I offer, which is the Ultimate Marketing Implementation System. Uh, our system helps you follow up automatically using some of the stuff that we talked about, content creation, gener generating leads, newsletters, and books. We turn that into an entire package. We give you websites and everything, and uh, that's what we talked about. So today. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do for this challenge, and you're welcome to come back. If you paid for this challenge, you're welcome to come back next month. We're going to be doing this next month. There are going to be a lot more people involved. But uh, today's challenge and the purpose of today I want to show you is I want to communicate. I want to communicate and emphasize the benefits of making sure and ensuring that you follow up. And that one of the best ways that you can do that is by doing a newsletter. So I have a presentation that I'm going to play. This comes from a class that I've done uh, for my social media mastermind class that I teach. And I'm going to show you like how to use newsletters in your business to generate referrals, right? You always want to be following up with people. You take them through certain things and it's like, okay, how do I follow up? The way you do that is through newsletters. So I'm going to play a video for you and it's going to show you the importance of following up with your leads. All right. So let's get started. I want to play some music for you today. So let's, can we do that? Can we play a little bit of music? All right, let's do that. All right, here we go. We got some music going. Okay, so I'm going to play this video for you. And after the video, I'll be right back and we'll talk about our homework tasks, our implementation tasks. And, um, you know, we'll go from there. Thank you, Beth Ellen. So what's interesting today is we're going to be talking about newsletters and Beth Ellen keeps talking about like the new hip digital way. And I'm going to take it back. We're going to go like a little bit old school. So I'm excited about that part. Um, welcome everyone to the I'm old school. So I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is like, uh, cause it makes a difference. We try to, uh, in general, we try to cheap out on our marketing and stuff like that. And we, as real estate professionals, we should be spending more money than probably any other professional because we're dealing with such a high, uh, the asset is so expensive. We should be willing to invest money. Um, I'm not saying we should be throwing money away, but we should be willing to invest in our customers, invest in our clients. And I'm going to show some ways on how we can do that today. Um, all right. Uh, so everybody that's here, you should be able to see. Um, you should be able to see a, a, a blue and white screen at the very front. I need you to type yes in the chat to confirm that you can see that screen with me. You'll see. Um, like some books and a QR code. Like that's that's my book. I publish a book based on this class. Um, and the way my classes works, I need at least 50% engagement. So two yeses is not enough. I need at least eight in there um, right now. And as the numbers go up, I'll need 50% engagement to proceed. So I need to make sure everybody's following me. Please type yes in that chat. All right. So yeah, I need participation because my class is implementation. Like a lot of times we come in and we just sit around and we do nothing with the information that we learn. So I like my stuff structured and, and engaged. Um, all right. So who this is not for, this is not for, you, you should know by now, this is not for lazy people. If you're just coming in here, just a peek, it's not for you. Turn, turn, turn around, go attend another class. Right. So we were talking about like, add, like collecting information for the Facebook group. Guess what? We can't serve everybody. Not everyone is going to like us, our delivery style, our tonality, our race, our ethnicity. Not everybody's going to want to do business with you. And that's OK. It's OK to turn some people away because there's enough business out there that you can do that. So this is not for know-it-alls, something for nothing mentalities, right? I talk about investing. I'm an investor, too. I'm a real estate investor as well. And I talk about investing a lot because we're running a business and we have to invest in our business. And it's not just money. It's also investing time. Right. So I'm grateful for the people that are here investing their time today, but you should be grateful to yourselves as well because you're investing into your business. Uh, so, uh, again, this is not for anybody that falls on this list. If you're a peeper creeper, you're a doubter, non-believer, you expect overnight success. This class is likely not for you. I'm excited about the topic because, like I said a little bit earlier, uh, we're going to take some of the stuff that we're doing 
And we're going to go like a little bit old school with how we um, invest in our business and invest in our client and customer retention. Um, newsletter is the best customer retention that you can have and is and it's fairly inexpensive, right? All right, so let's go. Who this is for? It's for agents and investors, other real estate entrepreneurs. If you have another business, you do other things. Uh, these concepts and the content that I show you is relevant to you. This is for people that are willing to put in the work. You're investing the time. You just got to go out and take these ideas and these strategies and you have to implement it into your business. Uh, and this is for introverts, right? So sometimes people are like, oh, no, I don't know what to say. I'm an introvert and I put myself out there so I can grow my business. I invest my time, my emotion, my energy, my money into my business so it can grow. All right. This is the marketing implementation and social media mastermind. I call it your battle plan to properly equip yourself with the right expert tools. So you stand out as expert real estate professional and attract high quality clients, customers and prospects without seeming salesy, slimy, pushy or desperate. So this newsletter strategy that we're doing today, this is like this is probably this is like one of the best ways where you can uh, market yourself and not seem like a pushy salesperson. Content creation is all about that. And a newsletter is a form of content creation. All right. So we have this class every Thursday, 2 p.m. Eastern time here in the EXP World Productivity Center. Week one, we do video communication and we teach you actionable strategies that you can use to increase your sales skills. That is hosted and ran by Nick Niehaus of the Business Video School. Beth Felon uh, introduced Nick to our classes and uh, he always brings the heat, as they say. Week two is uh, typically structured around video marketing. So we teach you how you can use video to attract high quality leads and close more deals. Week three, we do repurposing, reusing and redeploying content. So last week we did, uh, was that last week? Yeah, last week we'd use um, artificial intelligence is, is what we're calling it. It's not really that yet, but we use generative uh, text to create a guide. We created a foreclosure guide last week and we did that all in like less than an hour. I think it was like 12 subjects and it was a guide, a physical guide that we could create. If we have enough time, I could kind of show you that. But what I want you to think about is that guide that we've done is that could be a basis of your newsletter, right? And I typically, I like to work in 12s because 12 months, right? So the strategies that I'm going to teach today are, it's, a, it's around 12 because a newsletter is a monthly newsletter and you can send that out once per month. All right, next. So week four is marketing implementation and advertising strategies. So I'm going to go into, uh, newsletters, right? And week four is typically like the top strategies that expert marketers use. And I'm showing you that expert marketers use newsletters, right? And the way we do it today, this is one of the things that you do to grow your business. Some of the largest companies in the world still use newsletters, right? They still news use, use newsletters and they get a lot of business from just newsletters. It's like the best follow-up asset that you can have in your business. Week five is a surprise. I don't know what week five is coming this month yet, but we shall see. All right. I, I have not done this in a while, but um, I'm, I'm being intentional about this. I'm doing this for a reason because I want some of you to, to understand. Uh, I want you to see this implemented, right? So I have a free book. If you're interested in this book, uh, send me over the respective information right there on the screen and I'll send you a free copy of this book. Uh, it must be, we got, we got, we got 27 people here. So I can do, uh, let me see, 10%. I could probably do 20% of the people that come here. It says 10%, but I could probably do 20% because guess what? They do cost, they do cost me money. So you must send over the information as you see on the screen, exactly like that. Send me your full name, your mailing address. Your, it's a physical book. It's not a digital book, right? And I'm emphasizing that because that's what we're that's, that's relevant to uh, our presentation today. Send me over your email, your phone number. Uh, it's the fir first come, first serve, right? So you have to do it now or before the class is over, or you won't get a copy. Uh, if you're if you don't want to do that, you are more than welcome to uh, visit my website or visit Amazon to get a copy. Uh, it's all about how you can employ marketing into your real estate business. This is marketing specific for real estate entrepreneurs. If you're an agent or an investor, these concepts and these strategies apply to you. And it also comes with a bunch of bonus items too, like bonus videos, audios, recordings, stuff like that. Um, 
yeah so that's that now uh i also have a planner that i like to share i'm not going to drop the link right now because we can we can go over that later i'm going to tell you how you can collect the slides and you can access that there a little bit later so next uh everything that i show you and that i teach you are come from practical and real world experiences i run a marketing agency for real estate entrepreneurs real estate entrepreneurs aren't the only avatar i serve but i serve a, uh, probably 80 percent of my clients are real estate entrepreneurs uh, we help with lead generation and marketing we help with google ads facebook ads and other social media ads we help with websites funnels landing pages etc these are some tips for you to get the most out of this training. Make sure you utilize the screenshot feature and function for access to the recording and the slides. I will tell you how you can do that a little bit later. Uh, the slides will always, anytime I teach or I do a presentation, I try to include as many resources as possible. My slides always contain resources in them. So uh, do me a favor. I want to get some engagement going. What's a real estate deal worth in your market? What's a real estate deal worth? Like, what is the, what do they call it? The ACE, a, I forget what it's called. The GCI. I don't know. But what's a, what's the average commission you get from a deal in your business? I want to see what, what we have going on here. Two point five. What's the what's the amount? So we got four thousand. We got twenty two k. David, you're in a good market. Ten k, eight to ten k. Wow. Okay. Email. Sebastian, what number is that? Like, how much money is that? Jerry Ann, two to five to fifteen thousand. Okay. All right. We got some good numbers here. Sixty seven six six thousand seven hundred fifty. Okay. I wanted to get a. I wanted to get a gauge and see what that's like. So. All right. So nobody said under a hundred dollars. That's like the that's the that's a big thing that I want to do. Nobody said under a hundred dollars. Everybody's in the thousands, right? And we have to. I, I, I'm like we gotta set ourselves up to understand that we're investing in our business, right? When it comes to advertising and lead generation, right? I'm not saying we're gonna throw money at the wall, but nobody in here typed less than a hundred in investing in their business and for their clients. So. The reason why I mention that is because a lot of times we're unrealistic about the money or the time we have to spend in our business to get a return on that. What I mean by that is if you want fast and good, typically it's not low cost. If you want low cost and fast, typically it's not good. And when you want good and low cost, typically it's not fast. You can't have it all. You have to pick two. Right. And I find I just I, I would rather spend money because I value my time. So I like to spend money. I like to invest. I'm not saying I invest irresponsibly, but I like to invest in my business. All right. Uh, more tips. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. These are some tips for you to get the best out of this training. The more you involve yourself in the training and any training is going forward, the more you learn, the more you retain. All right. Uh, next, you can't learn everything in an hour. Sometimes I do a open office hours at 315. Uh, I can't do that this week, but sometimes I'll open that up and I'll do uh, a mastermind or do a customized session with you if you need specific help. Uh, I'll probably be able to get back to that next week. All right, so... These are some past trainings that I have for you. It's about nine trainings in here that's that are included, right? It's to encourage you to get the slides and go out and implement what you're doing uh, or some of the things that you learn in your business. These are past subjects and topics, Facebook advertising, uh, creating a Facebook ad, Instagram for real estate, how to follow up, remarketing, retargeting. These are past trainings that we've done and you can have access to those, to those when you collect the slides. We've got video, why you should use video marketing, We've got easy video marketing, digital marketing masterclass, and uh, video marketing masterclass by the Business Video School. So these are all past trainings. Sometimes people ask, are these recorded? Some are, some aren't, and it, it, it really depends, right? For access, sorry, you, sorry, you will... You we pass? Excuse me? Uh, these past trainings, where did you say we get them? Uh, when you collect the slides at the end of the class. I'll show you how. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, you're good. Ask any anybody have any questions? Speak up. That's that's welcome. So uh, these are I have a YouTube channel with other trainings and other resources. Right. Remember, I like to offer as many resources as I can. So 
there you go for YouTube. And then I also have a Facebook group that you can join as well if you're interested. Uh, and like we were talking about before, like this is a different aspect of my business because I run a marketing agency, but I don't let anybody in if they don't fill out the information in my group. I don't let anybody in because I'm not just running a group for fun, right? I'm running a business. So if you don't, I don't require people, like if you don't fill out the information, you just don't get accepted to the group. So keep that in mind. Uh, you are not obligated to join, but uh, I give you an option. All right. So um, I tell this stat all of the time each week. At any given moment, only 3% of people are ready to buy now. Uh, these are all stats that support that, that come from the National Association of Realtors. I'm not going to pause here for too long uh, you can collect the slides and go into more detail on this a little bit later but just keep in mind like we got to be a little more realistic about marketing and advertising these numbers are not like super high numbers right so the more the more leads right like i was talking to you jerry and like i want more leads because it's like look i got a what the three percent chance a one percent chance of closing so i want to collect as much information as possible so i can follow up with those people this is across all three percent is across all industries combined. And in our industry, it's only zero point four to one point two percent. So we have to set ourselves up for success. And collecting that information is one of the ways that we do that. Uh, the difference between branding and marketing, I talk about this a lot. I'm not gonna stop. Uh, you take a screenshot of here. I'm not gonna stop here too long, but you can kind of see a brief a, a brief overview of the difference between branding and marketing social media is the number one lead generation tool for realtors and in the prior class McFarland showed us how we could use our facebook group and uh start to get grow our business in a way that makes sense so we can grow leads and uh get people into our funnels on our lists um get their phone numbers have them calling us we are doing that through social media you don't have to run ambitious mail campaigns or go out and door knock social media is a alternative and is a complement to some of those things that you're doing so i'm not saying don't do the other things but social media is a fast way to start getting leads near immediately Video marketing stats, 73% uh, of homeowners say they're more likely to list with an agent that uses video. Uh, most of the time, when I check with the audience, most people are not using video. So one of the best ways that you can stand out and separate yourself is by using video. Start to integrate and incorporate video into all you do. Next, users are 12 times more likely to share video content than any other type of content. And then uh, right here, directly from National Association of Realtors, they say that f less than 40 percent of agents use video. And every, again, like I said, every time I survey the audience, less than 10 percent of vi use video consistently. So nobody's doing it consistently. They might have done one here and there once in a while. I forget, but nobody's doing video consistently. So if you could just do video consistently, you can automatically separate yourself and start generating leads and doing really great business. All right. So this is I'm going to I'm going to warn you right now. This is a trick question. But who agrees with this? Knowledge is power. Who agrees? Let's type in the chat. I need at least 50 percent going. Knowledge is power. True. There we go. Yes. Cody agrees. Faith agrees. All right. So I set you all up. It's a trick question. Uh, and the reason why it's a trick question, right? That, that, that statement is true. We need more context. We need more context. Applied knowledge is power, right? So we're here and we're learning, but it's not going to matter what we're learning if we don't go out and apply and implement what we learn. Want us to understand that we have to go, we have to take that knowledge. We have to take that education and we have to go and apply it. So that is like Jerome. Well, what's the big deal about implementation? We just talked about it. We have to go apply what we're learning. Like a lot of us here, like we're likely we're all licensed. So we have enough education. We were smart enough and ambitious enough to go out and say, you know what? I want to do something else. I want another career. I want to do real estate. I want to sell houses, whatever it is, whatever your dreams were, your ambitious, you were smart enough to do that. So I know you have the knowledge. Now we just have to take it to the next level. And this is why it matters. This is called the cone of learning. And it emphasizes and showcases we learn more, we retain more information through active activities, through active activities.
All right, so type yes in the chat. That is the housekeeping, right? Type yes in the chat if you're ready to learn newsletters. And I call newsletters the ultimate follow-up asset. This is like the best. I, I challenge somebody to let me know what's a better way to follow up with your customers and prospects because I have yet to find it. I have yet to find it. Now, uh, let me tell you a quick story. I used to work for a real estate investor association and uh, I, I, I hit, a, I hit a, a, a dark point. I hit like rock bottom and I was like really sad. And I was like, well, um, I was ready to quit the business in real estate. I was an investor or I was trying to be an investor. I was a want to be investor. Then one day I got a newsletter in the mail and I decided to read it and I was looking through it and it had some stuff in here. And guess what happened to me? Right. I got inspired again. I was inspired again because I got this newsletter. It was a physical copy, right? I got this newsletter in the mail. I came home and I opened up that newsletter and I was inspired again. And it gave me the spark to get back out there and continue my real estate investing journey. Um, these concepts that I'm going to talk about today, this comes from one of my mentors named Dan Kennedy, the newsletter, right? So if you need another source about newsletters, Dan Kennedy gave me uh, some of this information. Uh, next is Bill Glazier, right? He says... Newsletters are the most powerful form of media you can use in your business. And I absolutely 100% agree. This is all backed by facts and research, right? You can do a lot by formulating a newsletter. And I'm going to show you some practical things that you can do to generate a newsletter. All right. So here's everything that we're going to learn about in our newsletter. Like I said, it's the ultimate marketing asset. Next, it doesn't matter how good your newsletter is if it doesn't get open and read, right? So, uh, we're going, to, we're going to talk about demonstration. We're going to talk about digital versus print newsletters. We're going to talk about the objectives of your newsletter. And then we're going to talk about the best strategy for your newsletters. We're going to talk about what information to include. And we're going to talk about some of these things. My slides are a little mess, messed up, so bear with me. Now, what I talked about a little bit earlier, let me see. Are you... Please type yes if you're following me. I got to make sure people are following me because they tell me, Jerome, you go so fast. So please let me know if you're on pace with me. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. So remember what I said a little bit earlier. It doesn't matter how good your newsletter is. It doesn't matter how good any of your content is if nobody reads it. So the reason why I mention that is because a lot of the times we try to go. Thank you, Lindor. <laughs> We try to go digital and we try to go cheap with what it is that we're doing, right? So digital is okay, but I want you to take it to the next level by going physical, right? And I'll show you some math and some numbers. People are like, oh my God, is not expensive? No, not really. I'll show you some of that a little bit later. But digital is okay, but I want you to take it to the next level by going physical, right? I want you to have an actual print newsletter, right? Like whatever you're doing, if you have a newsletter, you had content, we're going to make that physical and we're going to invest in our business and invest in our customers and prospects that way. Right? So the reason why I mentioned like why go physical is because think about it. Um, I want to engage with the audience who here, uh, what is your inbox look like? The last time you check how many unread, how many unread emails did you have in your inbox? I just cleaned mine up today and I'm very particular I'm very particular. I don't like my inbox full, but it's gotten out of hand. Thousands. There we go. 2,000. Jerry Ann, what number is that? 254. That's, that's actually kind of good. It's still a lot. Too many. 300. Around 80. That's good too. I wish I could. I wish I had mine's that low. Okay, so... I appreciate that. Now tell me like how many, how much mail, like how much physical mail you get? Like, what's the number? What is it like? 5k. Yeah, but I saw yours recently. I was like, whoa, man, that's a lot. How many, how much physical mail are you getting? Is it in the hundreds? Is it in the fifties? What is that looking like? Jerome, that's why I mail with a, a specialty stamp postcards because People can't throw them away because they have to see the back and nobody gets mail anymore and they look at them. So you're right. absolutely right. You have to physically handle it to do something with it. With the inbox, you can just click red. You can delete it. You can discard it. But with physical mail, you have to handle it physically. So everybody's here saying f very little. And I would be willing to bet that you got like less than 50 in your mail like each day. 
Whereas inboxes, we're getting man, it's it's a lot. It's a lot that we're getting. People are subscribing us to newsletters that we don't know about and subscriptions we don't know about, and people are selling our information, but it's not a lot, right? So we get more attention by going physical. And I'm not saying that we don't still send the, the digital email, right? We don't still send the digital stuff, but one of the ways that we reach our audience, our customers and prospects is through the mail, right? We just, I just confirmed it. We, we got a bunch of people typing in hundreds, thousands. We don't get that much um, physical mail. We don't get nearly that much physical mail in the mail. Probably like throughout the week. I don't, I don't think we get a hundred letters in a month. I might be pushing it a little bit, but it's really hard for us to get that many actual physical mail pieces. And right, uh, Linda, like email is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. So digital and physical, I want you to understand that, right? Like show up like no one else is showing up, show up like no one else is showing up. So nobody else is doing like these physical newsletters. And that's what we're going to do, right? We're going to consider that like Beth Ellen said, the postcard, she's taking postcards and she's sending them because guess what? It's not a lot of competition there. You don't really have to compete with a lot of people. Now, next, the next cool thing about newsletters, they are seen as news and not advertising. It's news. It's not advertising. Newsletters build trust. They build relationships and publishing news makes you an expert. So guess what you're doing as a real estate sales professional, right? That's what we get licensed as. Now you're no longer the salesperson. You are the expert because you're publishing news. You're authoring. You're an authority, right? That's why I'm really huge on books because I'm no longer a salesperson. I become the author and the authority. And people want to work with experts. Salespeople, no, nah, you're very reluctant to work with a salesperson, but you want to work with an expert. And this is one of the ways that we position ourselves as an expert. Next, demonstration. These are some ways that you can uh, use your newsletter, right? So highlight success stories. Did you have a closing this month? Did you complete a messy transaction this month? Highlight success stories. Did you help somebody close? Did you help somebody get over a complicated hump? Highlight success stories. Next. Show referrals. Did someone make a referral to you? Give them some spotlight. Hey, I'm going to put you on my newsletter because I really appreciate you. And guess what they'll do? They'll be happy to show off that newsletter. So showcase your referrals inside of your newsletter. Next, um, newsletters, like when you do these things, it increases people's willingness to do business. Next, the, the cool, one of the things about advertising, right? And we see this all the time in our, in our agency. The most expensive part of your marketing and your advertising will be customer acquisition. It will be customer acquisition. I could bet you if everybody here went out and reached out to the people that they already done business with, you can double your business. You can double your business. So the most expensive part of advertising and marketing is customer acquisition. Invest in the retention and the follow-up. And a newsletter is one of the best ways that you can invest in retention and follow-up. Everybody wants to run the paid advertising and the digital stuff when they have a list already that they can invest in, right? So invest in customer retention versus acquisition. That's the most expensive part of your business is the acquisition, running the paid ads and getting people interested in what it is that you're doing. It's the most expensive time-wise, and it's also the most expensive uh, financially. Newsletters. Guess what people are wanting to do now that they're physical. I can't remember the last time somebody forwarded me to email. Hey, check this out, Jerome. This was cool information. That's been like at least 15 years, right, that I actually watched. But newsletters, people are willing to give away newsletters. Just like books, right? I already talked about that. Like, hey, people are willing to give, people are willing to give away your newsletters because it's informational. It's got some cool stuff in there, right? Next, uh, so we talked about digital, right? Digital is, is inexpensive. So we immediately, most times we try to run towards digital because it's typically more inexpensive. And the reason why I asked that question earlier is like, what is a lead worth to you is because uh, it's worth investing in this, this, this newsletter strategy, right? Digital is inexpensive. It's cool, but it's inexpensive. It doesn't yield us the same results. Digital, you can send frequently, right? There are some pros to it. You can send it frequently. You can send it once a week. You can send it every other day. You can send some digital stuff, right? And the digital stuff, we're not going to just do one or the other, right? You can still do the actual physical stuff. I'm not saying stop all your digital stuff, but I'm letting you know to incorporate what we're going to learn about today. Uh, email addresses, email addresses change often, right? Who here has 
more than one email address type yes in the chat if you got more than one email address if you only have one email address let me see yes people have more than one email address right we got different email addresses for different things right typically because it's so easy to sign up for an email some of us got my real estate email then i got my personal email then i got my fun email email addresses change often next uh it's difficult to get people to read a large qu large quantities of information online right it's it's sometimes once in a while you might find somebody that might read a lot of information online but typically we don't like to consume large quality quantities of information online we want it physical in our hand and to take it with us um, next we talked about this everyone else is already sending those emails so we got some interesting numbers in there 500 300 thousand 50 like people got a lot of emails everyone else is doing digital so we're trying to be different and we're trying to stand out and this is why we go physical right so beth allen talked about i want to see some we're doing physical i'm taking it back and i'm going old school we're doing actual physical newsletters print newsletters the next the next thing about digital is you have to really get somebody you, you really have to have them interested you have to have a really intriguing subject line most of the time right unless you've already built a relationship your subject line needs to be really enticing to get that person to open up that email you have to really really be really they have to really love you for them to open up your newsletter email each time that you send that email and i, I don't mean to put beth ellen on the spot but we were working together and she had she had these emails and she just she ignored like most of them to find what she was looking for like we're not like we're just we're not paying attention to a lot of the emails that we're being sent uh it's too much information in our inboxes too much information now print versus digital uh this this is a really good example how would you feel if someone sent you a happy birthday through email what would that be like somebody that you love and care about what would that feel like if they just said happy birthday is a greeting card what would that feel like would you appreciate that more than them sending you an actual thank you card even if it was nothing in it I want to see some answers in the chat what do you think about that is that thoughtful is that careless like what is that how do you receive a, a happy birthday through email or through text like just a digital happy birthday versus an actual physical happy birthday in the mail Jerome, a postcard. I send thank you handwritten thank you notes how 1960s huh how 1960s but effective right right i'd rather get a card in the mail so we got some people being realistic like i would rather get a card too even with nothing in there um if they send it to your mailbox that would be different right that would be different it's like okay there's some thought behind this this person took time even if it's only a 50 cent postcard you took time and you spent some money sending an email you don't really spend money to send the email right you might be paying for a subscription or something like that but we know that sending an actual physical card or a gift in the mail it takes more thought more effort and it shows that you care more than some email and in many cases it's an automated email all right so newsletter objective and goals here's what you want to do with your newsletter you want to set goals like what do you want your newsletter to do uh do you want it to inform your customers and prospects do you want it to build referrals for you do you want it to position you as an expert these are just some these are just some of the goals that you can do with your newsletter right there are several things that you can do uh you can position your partners as experts you can build out your team there are different things that you can do with your newsletters um the best strategy is both right i want you to be hybrid i want you to do both so i want you to i still want you to do your digital newsletters I still want you to send your digital emails, your automated emails. I still want you to send that, but I want you to send out your actual physical newsletters as well. All right? Break out. So you, you start with, which we're going to do today. You're going to see that you start with your overall core, your pillar of your newsletter, and you can then break that out into smaller chunks, right? You can use that in several ways, right? You have a, you have a pillar newsletter and you can say, go find the rest of this article in the actual physical newsletter or vice versa these are some strategies that you can implement for your newsletter now what information to include so a lot of times us as professionals we always try to keep our business super super relevant anybody can send news about the real estate industry we're going to send news we're going to send other information and we're going to give people something to look forward to other than just relevant 
business based information right so our newsletter should claim contain relevant information about 40 percent it should clean it should contain semi relevant information and it should con contain non-relevant information so what does that mean that means relevant information is your expertise in your profession so in this case us here we're real estate professionals so our newsletter will include that information it would include how to it would include why work with an agent why and tips it will include home buying tips home selling tips how to be a real estate investor how to work with an agent your local market right these are all relevant business information that you can include in your newsletter but we only want it to be 40 percent this kind of information should not be the only information in your newsletter what else should we include in your newsletter? Other information, right? Semi-relevant information, such as welcome new clients and new customers. Somebody just signed up for the newsletter, you got a list in there and you can say thank you. You can shout them out for joining the newsletter, right? We just talked about Facebook groups. A bunch of people join your Facebook group, put them inside the newsletter. Welcome to these members in the newsletter. And people like to see their name, they like to get thank you, they like to get appreciated and they like when you express gratitude, right? Client and customer spotlights. You've done something with a client or a customer that you want to spotlight, put that in your newsletter. Next, team member spotlights. We work with mortgage people. We work here as a broker to national brokers. You can spotlight team members, right? You can get content from other people. Q and A, uh, what are some common questions that you get about specific things? These are other semi-relevant pieces of information that you can include in your newsletter. Next, testimonials. Can never go wrong with testimonies. This is probably my favorite thing to do in anything is the testimonies. What are other people saying about Jerome, right? They don't care what Jerome is saying about Jerome. They care what other people are saying about Jerome. So testimonials is another example. What you miss, you can use this, right? So you have a newsletter, tell them what they missed in the last issue. Tell them what they missed in the Facebook group. Tell them what they missed in the local community that happened. Now, non-relevant, this is my favorite part because some people go some people go crazy about this part right as a professional we're trying to think for our customer but people love this stuff they love the fun stuff and i really appreciate beth Ellen because she she includes a flavor of this in her four letter friday uh blog fun stuff means you're going to include events games uh one of the things that i do is i include jokes in my newsletter dad jokes mom jokes and people look forward to those things calendar items what's going on in your community uh so i talked about beth Ellen for four letter friday those are items that you can include in your newsletter games and puzzles i think i can show you this a little bit later but i have in my newsletter i include games and puzzles people enjoy doing that right i can't remember the last time uh sudoku mazes puzzles like we don't get that stuff anymore because so much have gone digital people still appreciate these things though right you might be traveling you might pick up the newsletter and take it with you because you know it got those games and and things in there for you to do photos so this is a people are like well what do i put in a newsletter right your newsletter doesn't have to be long it doesn't have to be short but it, it, you can create content for your newsletter fast and one of the best ways to do that is through photos Share some photos, photos of community, just listed photos. Check with your broker, of course, but check. You can do different photos. Contests. You can run a contest. Okay, uh, what kind of contest? You can run a contest on, you know, who finished your crossword puzzle the fastest and used the best colors or you know, different stuff like that. But you can run contests, and that's called gamification. People like to compete. They like to compete. So this is something that you can run in your newsletter. Seasonal and holidays. So 12, right? I like that number 12. There are typically there is a holiday per month. And you can emphasize that holiday in your newsletter and share some content and demonstration around that particular subject. All right. So marketing strategy, specific marketing strategy that you can do with your newsletters. One is you can give a stack of them to your local businesses, right? You can Yes, you can include giveaways. You can include a stack and give it to your local business. You can tell them, hey, if you let me put these here, I'll put some advertising in it for you. And I send this out to uh, 50 people per month and they might want to come in and get their brakes changed if you let me put these here, right? You can give a stack away to local businesses. You can have a stack in your office, right? You can have a stack in your house that you just give away, right? And you can use this so you can collect people's information, right? Who wants, you know what? This was a really good call. Uh, you're not ready to do business now, but would you mind if I put you on my list so I can send you a monthly newsletter? 
it's a it's a physical newsletter so i will send i will need you to send me your mailing address and that shouldn't be a problem right so this is where you can collect their information and then you can follow up with them consistently at least 12 times because you're going to do once a month All right next uh so newsletters one of the things i want you to do is i want you to include your newsletter in an envelope and the reason why is because you can include other things in your envelope you can include other things in your envelope and everything that we're talking about right now so far a newsletter in total with the shipping should cost you three dollars maximum just to send right so we all talked about we all gave our numbers right so three dollars maximum what is that thirty six dollars for the year we still have not hit one hundred dollars yet in marketing and advertising into our business now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try i'm going to try to show you a little bit of implementation on the newsletter and i also put together a i have like a video that goes into full detail on how you can implement uh this newsletter strategy into your business but this is what you need for implementation you need content which we went over last week we did like 12 point guide on foreclosures you need news what are some what's some news happening in your local area around your around your place or specific to your niche right we kept talking about niches cats we were talking about yoga we were talking about tennessee you can share news about that but finally gave some really good tips on where to go get content the library right where to get news next uh you need your media so pictures um text and then you need google docs google docs i really really highly suggest google docs but some people might want to use canva i suggest google docs because it's free uh, Canva has some free options, but in general, like Google Docs is free, it's easy to use. You can share it pretty quickly. All right, so actual implementation, I use slides. I add content, I download it as a PDF, and I share the PDF content to go get it printed. So let me show you some examples of newsletters. Uh, I'm gonna stop my share, and I'm gonna see if I can share my camera first. I have a question. Yes. So I'm a Canva person, but I would prefer to use Google Docs. Do they have templates for newspapers, newsletters? They don't. Google Docs? That I, I, as far as I know, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I would have to look into it. But uh, Can, Canva's no. formatted it in Google? <sighs> Say that again? How did you format the newsletter? I formatted it myself. And it doesn't have to be. Uh, which I'm going to show it doesn't have to be really complicated. Um, one of the things I like to encourage people to do is to set expectations, right? So sometimes people are like, oh my God, it's not going to be professional. You set expectations. Hi, people. I'm creating a newsletter and I'm not super professional um, with putting it together. Um, I'm going to send you the best information I can in the format that I can use on the skills that I can. And you let people know. Some people are going to be like, I, I, I don't want it. And some people are going to be like, absolutely, sure, I'll take it. It's authentic. So um, that's what I do. I typically, I'll set expectations. Uh, you can use Canva. More than welcome to use Canva. I just like Google Docs because it's free. And last time we were working on an experiment, uh, some people needed to upgrade to Canva. And uh, it, it just was like not a fun experience because some people didn't have the Canva Pro. So, uh I recommend Google, but you can use Canva too. The basis is that we want to we want to put this information into a document. We want it in general. We want it like four and multiples of four, four, eight, 16, 32, whatever it is. And then we ship it off to a printer so they can print it out for us. Now, let me, is, is that help? Is that clarify for you? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. All right. So newsletter, you can, everybody see me and my screen. Or, or me on camera okay all right yeah cool perfect okay. so let's see all right so what you should be able to see is you should be able to see me and you should see right here i have a newsletter this is a newsletter Right. This is how my this is how my newsletter looks. This is like the latest version. That's what it looks like. And the point that I was making a little bit earlier is that you want to make it physical, right? Because you can include other items inside of your uh, letter when you do that. Right. So we're sending out newsletters, but we're also making offers to people 
uh, with other things in here, right? So you can include your business card. You can include a free, free consultation. You can include different things in here once you have an envelope. Uh, this is what my actual physical newsletter looks like. It is black and white, but I send this out to people and I include many of those elements that we talked about today, right? So I'll send you a digital version so you can see it, but these are different things inside of my newsletters, right? This is a product that we build for different clients that we come, that we get. We help them compose and put together a newsletter so they can send out to their customers and prospects to follow up with them uh, consistently with news without seeming salesy or pushy, right? So that is what the physical newsletter looks like. In general, like I'm saying, it costs under $3 to send it. So if a customer is going to come through and it costs them $36, um, I'm willing to spend $36 because they're going to do business with me over the years and they're probably going to send me referral after referral after referral after referral. Now, I'm going to do a screen share and show my newsletter and my template and why I like to use Google Docs. Google Slides. So this is Google Slides. Please type yes if you can see my screen. Okay, perfect. So this is Google Slides and this is a, um, and you can have this template. I'll tell you how you can have this template, but this is Google Slides and this is what my template looks like. It is, let's make it a little bit bigger. All right, this is what it looks like. So I've taken Google Slides and the, the orientation is vertical. So it, it so it's like a page, but this is what it looks like um, right here. You can see that I have in here how to use this newsletter template for anybody that collects the slides a little bit later, but this is a template for you. It's a very generic, a very simple template, and it allows you to put your title, your subtitle, your benefit driven headline, and then you can start to formulate what it is that you're going to talk about. This the, the video contains a lot more detail on how you can do this step by step and very specifically. But once you have that core information, similar to what I talked about last week on the, the, the points that we did the pre foreclosure. Right. You can start to put that information and incorporate it into your newsletter. These are I wish you could go bigger. All right. You know what? Let's do a full screen. That might be a little bit better. So this is what it will look like. This is what it looks like without any content in here. So in the brackets and everything, you can kind of see where you can input your relevant information. Again, the video that I've included will take you through how you can use this and implement it into your business. But this is a template that I have for you. And this template contains things that you can put into your newsletter, right? So I went over some of it a little bit earlier, but these are other things that you can include in your newsletter, right? Uh, monologue, topic, games, puzzles, jokes, offers, photos, tips. Uh, we're the expert, right? So where are you? What are you doing? Questions and answers, your different services, feature clients. These are all things that you can start to incorporate into your newsletter. All right. So um, let me see. Let me try to walk through. Uh, I was going to try to implement, right? But the video is there. So as an example, let me find that pre-foreclosure document that I had. Oh, that's incorrect. All right, so this is a guy that we created. I can't find the guy. This is this is annoying. Um, anyway, last week we used Chat GPT and we came up with a guide of content. What's that? Uh, that one. It might be in that one document you have where you have all the the, the ways that you. Chat GPT. I saw it. Okay. Right. Real estate guide prompts. You, I think you might have. Oh, I think that is it. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is it. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. You were here last week. So this is, uh, I'm going to do like a little bit of implementation, like one or two things. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And we would take this content now and then we build this content into our newsletter, right? So this is the relevant content. So maybe as an example, my niche is pre foreclosures. So my newsletter might be the pre foreclosure newsletter. And that's not what I'm going to call it necessarily, but maybe that's what my, the basis of my video is. And this is why it's important to kind of have a niche no, as well. That actually is my niche. Okay. Well, there you go. Like this is some content, right? So we built this document last week and then I can start to incorporate this document into my newsletter, right? So what is a pre foreclosure in real estate? I'm just going to copy this content real quick. I got my key takeaways and then I'm just going to take it over to my newsletter and I'm trying to show that the newsletter doesn't have to be overly complicated, right? You send some information and you, uh, you send it out to your customers, and your prospects, right? You, you're going to do a digital as well as the physical format. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking my template, right? And this, this is the first template is how to use this newsletter. I'm going to duplicate this and now I'm just going to change the content in here, right? So I'm going to delete this link out. And I'm going to paste my text in here, right? So what is a pre-foreclosure in real estate? Now I have a particular article or a, a subsection of my newsletter that I can share in, in my, uh, or a subsection of my guide that I can share in my newsletter. So what is a pre-foreclosure in real estate? That is the topic. I'm going to copy this and I want to change this heading to that, right? Uh, let's do a, there we go. Change that heading to that. And there I have like a page of what is a pre foreclosure already, right? So there's my informational stuff. And then I can start to include and incorporate other things, right? So just like the halfway implementation that I want to show you, um, I'm going to show you an example of my newsletter, like one of my full newsletters, and then uh, I can open up for questions. But is, is every like, is this making sense to people? Are you following me? Like where, let me get some feedback. See, see how this is going exciting okay all right so that's that is like the implementation right so this is the template and your template you would take your template and make it something like this so let me show you my current newsletter that's going out for the for this month that's coming up right so we got a newsletter coming out for april right for my marketing agency right it's called the marketing implementation Le newsletter and if you signed up for one of those books right? You'll likely get a copy of this, but this is my newsletter. This is what it looks like. This is the front page, right? So I've taken that template that I've shown you. And this is, we start working on this, right? We start putting the information in there. So we took that real, real simple template and we start putting information in there, right? This is what it looks like. This was the first page that you saw. This is a, 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 a monologue that I've done, right? Failure only happens when you quit. This is like, I'm an introvert, right? So I like to emphasize like introvert in action or introvert in person. I like to share that. People look forward to seeing that. So this was a, a presentation I had done uh, earlier this month. And I was just like showcasing, look, this is an introvert in action. Check me out, check what I'm doing. Uh, people look forward to that exploring my journey with me, right? So uh, these are some other things in the newsletter. Some of these are not updated yet, but you start to get the idea of what you can make your newsletter look like. This is the calendar and the events. Uh, this is me. I'm talking about what is marketing implementation. I'm talking about this in my newsletter. Uh, and these are the topics relevant to me and what I'm showcasing and what I'm sharing. Right. Um, this is like uh, I'm using. So like celebrity, right? You can borrow celebrity. You can do different stuff. So I'm borrowing celebrity from Robert Kiyosaki. And every month I'm going to put a quote in there from Robert Kiyosaki because I have some pictures with him as an example. Right. That's a um, and that helps show my authority. This is my podcast. I run a podcast. So I'm showing. Look, look at my podcast. Don't forget to go check out the podcast. We did something fun. Uh, this is me talking about how to connect with your audience, but I want to, there's the testimonials, right? So these are testimonials that I get. I'm including that in here. So it's like, Oh, uh, other people are saying Jerome is awesome. He must be awesome. Right. Beth Ellen, there you go. There you go. So every word. Se thank you. I appreciate you so much. You have no idea. Uh, other it's like services that you offer. What else do you do? What else can you offer people? Those are an example. Um, I want you to see the fun stuff. So remember I talked about the, the, the crossword puzzle. So this, this is a crossword puzzle that my customers and prospects will get each month. Right. And in the future, 
I plan on running a contest. Whoever does whoever does the most crossword puzzles gets something, right? As an example. But this is a word search puzzle that's incorporated. This is the fun stuff. This is stuff that people can look forward to. Uh, this is a word scramble that I'm including inside the newsletter, right? So we are so busy and so we, we're doing so much as professionals. It's okay to slow down and have fun sometimes. And I'm including that in here. I'm giving them relevant information, but I'm also giving, giving them some fun stuff. Um, and then I just tell personal stories about me, right? Like I, sometimes I miss context clues and I'm just being honest. I'm like, I, so I, I miss out on context clues sometimes because whatever is wrong with my brain, I just miss it. And I'm just being transparent, honest, and authentic with people. I'm sharing my stories and sharing who I am so people can get to know who I am. I got Sudoku in here and it's like, well, what is a real estate Sudoku puzzle? Nothing is the same thing as a Sudoku puzzle, but it is what it is. I call it a real estate Sudoku puzzle. Uh, we got a maze in here. We got some fun stuff in there. Uh, this is me talking about success and mentorship, how it matters to me and my business. Uh, me sharing, right? You already know by now, like ideas are worthless without implementation. This is just me sharing like my thoughts on, you know, not implementing. And then on the back, this is the last page. Um, I thank them for being a valued member. And I also include my contact information. This is how you reach me. So this is my actual newsletter. I showed you the physical copy, but this is the newsletter. And I encourage you to implement this into your business because of the things that we went over a little bit earlier. Those inbox numbers that we got, people are in the thousands of emails. And in the mail, it's not even really the hundreds that we're getting. So, and, and for each of us, it costs way over, way over a hundred dollars and maximum that it will cause you to send these newsletters are, is $3 per month, right? And that's three times 12, which is 36. So be willing to invest the $36 into your marketing and your lead generation to get business from your customers and your prospects. It's free lead generation, it's free advertising, it's free marketing. That's, and it's gonna work out and pay you for your business for years to come, All right? So with that, let's see how we can get access to the slides. So how you get access to the slides is by doing this. All right. So access to the slides, I want you to share with me. I'm going to drop a link in the chat. I need you to share with me your biggest takeaway that you learned. Let's see. Let's zoom out on this. At that link. There we go. So let's drop that link in there. You said, what's up with the upside down photo? It is it's to, to get people to ask questions like that. People are like, oh my God, I can't believe you. Do you know your photo is upside down? Of course I know my photo is upside down. So this is how you get access to the slides. You're going to leave me uh, honest feedback at the link that I just dropped in the chat. Uh, tell me your biggest takeaway or your favorite part of the training. What would you say to anyone else considering training and just send me a screenshot to that particular email address? I will send you over the slides. I will send you over the newsletter template and I will send you over uh, for anybody that's like specializes in foreclosures. I will send you over that foreclosure guide too. So you just have to leave me that feedback, follow instructions on the screen and I'll get it sent over to you. Who, who, uh, do we have any questions? We have five minutes and I'm open to answering any questions for anybody. Um, one of the things I forgot to share is like, this is your newsletter. Like Beth finally talked about it, like to, to put the questions into, into your Facebook group, but you would take that, right? That Facebook group that you're building, you're going to build a newsletter, right? And you're going to subscribe people to your newsletter using that Facebook group, using the questions inside of the Facebook group. This is the way you do it. This is how you get people on your list, subscribing to your newsletter, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, again, that's how you do it. Uh, I have the instructions on the screen. Once you do that, I'll get this information sent over to you probably within the next two hours. Cause I have something immediate after this, but I'll send you over the templates. I'll send you over. You'll get the trainings. You'll get the slides. You'll get access to all of that stuff. So you can go implement this into your business. The biggest thing that I want you to understand is that this is an inexpensive lead generation thing for you. If you go out to Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, you start asking them how much does it cost to generate a lead, they're going to tell you they're, they're probably going to be a minimum of $50 per lead, per lead. These new, this newsletter strategy, it takes you $3 per month and you can drip and you can market yourself to that customer prospect over 12 months. So just keep that in mind. If you're like, oh, I don't want to spend the money. How much is this going to cost? In general, those leads are $50 each, $100 each. And that's just the leads. It's not even really um, 
you know, you don't even really own the information. You're still going to have to share your commission. You're still going to have to like follow up and it still might not be guaranteed to close. This is a different strategy uh, that you can employ. And it's like, it's worth investing. Bro, it's yes. It's telling me that um, reason my user's not signed in, it won't let me go past the re review. I review, but reason I cannot just just send me the screenshot and i'll take care of you who who has questions if you have a question you have to open up your microphone i cannot read the chat right now yes hi jerome um the newsletter who's this isabel or solidad it's isabel hi isabel hi um regarding the newsletter do you just take the newsletter to the local printer to get it printed i i do not i send it to i have a uh i have a print fulfillment and i just send it to her i can kind of show you uh, so we can get like real about the numbers right uh let's see it's not local but it's it's uh cindy but they take care of everything for me so let's see can you still see my screen yes can, okay yeah so i send it to what does it cost so my envelopes are 35 cent and my newsletters are dollar 27 right uh this is like everything that was sent out right you can kind of see it there the most expensive part of this is the, the postage so i send this over it's like like i'm saying a dollar 27 a dollar 74 all right so maybe under four dollars maybe i gave a, maybe my numbers were a little bit off but 48 dollars to for you to generate and close thousands of dollars is like it's nothing all right so that's the numbers this is my this is who i use if anybody's interested just reach out to an ex for cindy uh tell her i sent you and they'll take care of you but it's the company is called city blueprint and they'll send out however many you need to send out if you only got 10 they'll send 10 if you got 20 they'll send 20 uh they'll take care of you and they know exactly what to do all you have to do is get them over the pdf and they'll they'll ship out your newsletters for you it's usually out to your customers in uh, less than a week most of the time in many cases it's three days okay thank you so much you're welcome so Any when we are leaving the review jerome um i, d I heard you say something about a screenshot also I d yeah I send me a screenshot of the review Oh, send you a screenshot. Yeah, that's it. all. Yeah, just send me a screenshot of the review for proof and I'll send you everything. You mean in workplace? How do we send it to you? Uh, email it to me. Email it to me. Let me bring up this, bring back up the screen. Uh, Sorry, I'm asking. Sorry. It's not your fault because I don't have this. I don't think I had the thing up there. So here we go. That's my email address there. Just send it right there and I'll send you over this stuff a little bit later. All right. Hold, just leave it right there so I can make sure I capture your email address. Correctly. Yeah, get that screenshot because I gotta go soon. Jerome, I left. I left you a. a, a um, David, I'll take care of you. Week. You're familiar. I'll take okay. care of you. Yep, just email me. Thank you. I had I had an idea about this uh, newsletter as well. So some people that may not have that money, you know, they can get it printed and then you know follow it up with some door knocking in their farm if they have a farm. Like that, that's what I've done in the past. You know, okay. Door knock. Anybody that answers the door, I give it to them. And talk yeah, that's to smart. Them. Just another way. Yeah. Just yeah. another way. Uh, All right. What's any... up next week? What's up next week, Jerome? I don't know. What do you want to learn about? I'm trying to get some ideas. I'm just soaking it all in. <laughs> All right, reach out to me because I don't. I, we don't have a subject yet. It's a surprise, and I don't have anything yet. But we'll see because week five is like a surprise. So something you want to learn about, if you want to do like implementation or figures, we can we can do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions before we go? All right, no questions. All right, everyone, I appreciate you all. I will see you next week. And um, I don't know what the subject is, but I'll see you next week. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate you. If you want access to the recordings and the slides and all that stuff that I share, the instructions are on the screen.
All right. So. Shows us video. Okay. All right. So the homework is implementation day five. Your homework is use Google, Facebook, or another source to generate a list of non business related topics that you can talk about. You want to generate five topics that you can talk about. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that on video. So talk about one topic on video. Just talk about it, what it is, what's going on at the event. Just talk about it in video. Post the video inside of the Facebook group. And uh, remember, the video doesn't have to be perfect. Progress over perfection. You're, you're, the main thing you're going to do here is you're going to uh, you want to get out there and you want to start to get in this habit and behavior of being an authority. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by using video, right? So your task for day five is to use Google or Facebook, right? If you don't know how to use Google, you go to uh, day four, which was yesterday. We talked about how to come up with all the, or, or day three. We talked about how to come up with all of the content that you need. You go to Google, you use that strategy, and you post a topic that's not related to your business. Post a topic that's not related. You find a topic that's not related to your business because this is the kind of content that's going to start to separate us from every other agent and every other person out there, right? So use Google, Facebook, or another source to generate a list of five non-business related topics that you can talk about. Pick one topic, post the video inside the Facebook group. The video doesn't have to be perfect. Progress over perfection. All right. So. And just and just so you can see me, right, I like to practice what I preach. This is me. I'm here available on video talking to you. Uh, nothing is perfect. Right. We we're, Our objective is not to be perfect. But I want you to see me. I want you to get to know um, how you can integrate video into your business. My name is Sharon Lewis. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you spending your time with me during this challenge. If you are a VIP member, we have one hour um, after this session. You're welcome to join, and we'll talk about where you can get some customized specific attention if you need that in your business. But beyond today, I appreciate you all for participating in here, and I will see you likely in the next challenge. Bye-bye. Jerome Lewis. Partner Jerome Lewis. 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 This is a book from Jerome Lewis. This is a book that was paid and really caught my eye. It was the insider secrets of successful advertising, lead generation, and marketing implementation for real estate entrepreneurs. So this book, I can't wait to read. I'm very excited to touch base on and how to get a little bit more people to recognize the business and the services that I offer personally and then trying to progress that forward. He is somebody who uh, is an implementer. He knows how to get results. He has a track record of helping people get results. Anyone's looking for a marketing expert. He is so knowledgeable. He has introduced me to some very practical, useful tools and just the way that that I can use them 
for it to flow in my business has been tremendous. If you're stuck in your business on implementation, which tool to use, look no further. Jerome, thank you so much for helping me launch my virtual summit. I'm so excited that you are part of that as well. But this, uh, this is where you place your ass. So remember I kept talking about like, why would you just do TikTok? When all you gotta do is hit the checkbox on Facebook. Well, this is where you do that inside the ad placement. So all you do is check that box and all your stuff is over on Instagram. I'm eternally grateful for the opportunities that has risen out of our partnership. Yesterday, I taught my very first class in EXP World, and I was so nervous to do it. I honestly struggled with even like believing in myself that I could do it, but when it was all said and done, everyone loved the class, and Jerome believed in me the entire time. He's always been very helpful to me. He's actually been very helpful to a lot of my clients. I turn to him for a lot of, of advice. And we have we have worked together on and off. Can't tell by now, I'm very serious. I'm an implementer. I'm like, dude, let's get stuff done. So she, you go to her class and you come get the content, then you come to my class, which is, it used to be just the social media mastermind. My partner, Jerome Lewis, and my friend, um, he, he really helped me out with this. And, you know, I can't really even write a sentence sometimes, but he somehow got me to do this, right? He got me to do this, right? And, you know, this is this feels good, right? When you see this, like, hey, how many people can say they wrote a book, right? Me And Jerome did this really well. He reached out, he gave me a video, and he said, hey, Leanna, by the way, I noticed that you always have the retargeting recipes behind there um, and that you don't have your own book. So I went ahead and did something for you to help you. And he says, I did something. So I basically did 80% of the work for you. So first of all, he wowed me with what he did. But one of the reasons why he wowed me was that it was, it was just out of the blue. And it, it was, it's definitely something I need. And, uh, you know, he figured that out for me and nobody had ever done that. I had talked to like Jerome comes to all the calls. So that's another thing is, is I see Jerome, um, because he comes to all of the trainings and the calls and things like that. But speaking of, as the recipient this really made him stand out for me and it showed me like here's a go-getter here's a guy who like literally does something and gets it done my marketing and implementation it was extremely simple and easy and effective if anyone were to ask me who would i recommend to suggest it would definitely be jerome because he really helped me simplify some of my offerings compile them and then to also see my value and what it was that I was offering the world. Highly recommend each one of you, if you are someone looking to work uh, in the real estate industry, then make sure you reach out to uh, Mr. Jerome. I'm sure that uh, he'll be the best person to guide you further. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jerome. Thank you. You are appreciated. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Jerome.